Hi everyone, welcome to this video. My name is T, if you're new here, I really do hope everyone's day is going well. So, I keep up with pop culture, uh, clearly. Literally wouldn't have a job if I didn't. And recently, there was some controversy with this singer named Jessie Nelson. She was previously a member of the popular British group Little Mix. And she recently made her solo debut with the song Boys featuring Nicki Minaj. The progression of Jessie's public image has been controversial before, for obvious reasons. Okay. But it was set off with this recent music video and intensified when Nicki Minaj... <sighs> Oh gosh. See, Nikki. Are we here to talk? We're not even here to talk about. But let me just say, Nikki's day on this channel is well overdue, right? But like, I like. I'm gonna try to take my time with her. Like, I try not to deal with her too strong because it's a complex case. It's a very, very complex case, right? But like, my patience. Anyway, <laughs> when this story first broke, I thought. It's not for me. I'm not getting involved. I'm not getting involved. Because the last time I got involved, y'all damn near made me earn my first strike. Beyond that, cultural appropriation, black fishing, all that stuff. I don't wanna say I don't care anymore, but I don't really care anymore. No, it's not that I don't care, it's just that it's not going anywhere. And the more emotion and attention I lend to it, the more lucrative of a loophole it becomes. Not just for Jesse, but for all of them. So this video is definitely not a Jesse Dragon session because pff, I fear she's already gotten her fix. Twitter is a very mean place. Today is not for that. I'm not here to scold anyone. I'm not here to tell grown adults with more sense than we give them credit for, why what they're doing is wrong and weird. Instead, I'm more interested in exploring why. Because it's really quite fascinating when you think of the kind of mental gymnastics it takes for a person to sit down and say, you know what I feel like doing today? And then do some shit like this. And then the rest of the world is like, yeah, 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 no, that sounds good. Quite fascinating. Even more fascinating is when we talk about black fishing, right? And it leads into us understanding the aspects of blackness that are most desirable in pop culture and how its profitability fluctuates the closer or farther it's pushed from authenticity. When we see all these different pathways to explore this phenomenon, it's even more fascinating that people still have the good gumption to say that the real problem here is that black women are just bitter and jealous. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. So when you put it like that, now I gotta know. Now I gotta get involved. Not only do I gotta get involved, but I gotta bring a gang with me. We got a lot of opinions being presented today. I had to do what I had to do, okay? You've left me with no choice because we are in a crisis. The term black fishing was popularized by Juana Thompson, a journalist, a digital programmer, host, and digital strategist. Yeah, we list full resumes around here. Ever since Juana Thompson brought the term black fishing to the mainstream, more and more definitions and interpretations have been shared. But the one that resonates the most with me is by Leslie Bow, a professor of Asian American studies at the University of Wisconsin, who describes black fishing as a racial masquerade that operates as a form of racial fetishism. Now this definition is especially profound, right? Because I've already talked about the fetishization of black women before, but in that video, I talked about it from the angle of non-black men using their lust for the blackness of a woman as some sort of self-congratulatory trait with their weird asses. But I never once considered that blackness could also be used to costume sexual desirability. like. In costuming blackness, you also costume sexual desirability. Like, I don't know why I never connected the two. From my point of view, this is purely marketing and strategy. I don't believe this is a matter of an identity crisis or anything of the sort. I don't think these women actually want to be black. I don't even think that they want to be racially ambiguous. I know that's kind of like where the argument is turning. Like, oh no, they don't want to be our kind of black. They want to be like that kind of black. I don't think it's none of that. They want to be rewarded for perceived ambiguity. They want to latch on to the world's habitual hypersexualization of black women. 
sexualization that is especially welcome in the space of hip hop. They wanna latch on to that fuck it attitude that hip hop invites because of its reputation of non-conformity and outspokenness, but they very much would like to remain structurally, governmentally, and politically white. It would really do them some good to just go ahead and admit that because like I talked about two videos ago, separating yourself from your race for societal benefit is not exclusive to white women. Women of all races do this, obviously for very different and complex reasons, but for whatever the reason, it happens. It would do them some good to say, I know I made fun of you for this. I know I called you ghetto for it, but look, racial ambiguity is in. The days of the Jessica Simpson and the Mandy Moore and the Britney Spears being the pinnacle of beauty, that's over. I don't want that no more. I want some of that Kylie shit now. Now we want that close proximity to blackness while maintaining the structural protection of whiteness because that's what's in. And that's what I'm trying to cash out on. Just say that. Not for damage control because <laughs> The damage is already done. But for the white women who manufacture their race, they're doing themselves a great disservice by avoiding that harsh introspection because without it, how could you effectively identify what your motives are? Do you even know why you're doing this? My name is Tiana and my pronouns are she, her, and I am 24 years old. My name's Jamal, my pronouns are she, her, they, them, and I'm 25. My name's Michelle. Uh, I use she, her, and I'm 23. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mariama Moray, she, her pronouns, and I'm 21 years old. I don't want to seem like I'm giving too, people too much of the benefit of the doubt, but I think some people don't really understand this stuff. Like, mm -hmm. again, and, and I also think it's also because we, I don't think we have to, but we don't really talk to one another outside of like social media in a lot of times, like having these conversations. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, I think about one of the main girls that were, was called out for black fishing. I can't, I don't know if her name was like Emma something. I don't know, but she was like the main girl. She put oh, up like, okay. a sto like yeah. she put up stories, like, look at my hair, look at my mom. Like I tan this dark. And she just like, no matter what was going on, she just could not like confront the issue. Like girl, we saw your makeup tutorial. But it's like all of those things where it just, it gets too hard to do. And then again, as black women, I feel like it's only but so much of our job to dismantle white supremacy. It's kind of like you go back and forth where you want to dismantle it. And then it's like, no, and other people have to do it, but they not. Instead, they like, they hang out with us. They love how much we talk. And then they start looking like us. And it's like, you've missed the plot. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to stop. <laughs> You're not supposed to start looking like us. You're supposed to start dismantling white supremacy, but instead you got the darker foundation and all of this. And it's like, okay, whatever. The appreciation, the like quote unquote appreciation they do. To be honest, I think that's something that I haven't thought about enough because I actually try not to think about beauty, um, which is easy for me, easier for me as a white woman than it is for other women, honestly. But yeah, I would definitely say that even though I don't think most white people or specifically white women necessarily feel beautiful. I do think that they feel empowered to um, basically control the narrative around beauty and deem white features as beautiful. Maybe I'm just not ready for that level of uh, self-reflection. When you think of other white women, what do you think it would do if they were to sit down and have have those introspective moments and actually think critically about beauty? Ooh, dude, I don't know. I mean, I think it would, in a way it would break everything apart, right? Because literally everything in the world of white people that we deem beautiful is based on white features. I've been able to think so critically about my position when it comes to beauty yeah. and when it comes to how I feel in relation to other races, because. I, I don't know if I was just so easily liked or desired by everyone, or if I were so easily seen beautiful in a white supremacist context, I don't think I would be able to effectively critically think about beauty. I think I would be able to maybe scratch the surface and maybe hear what some other races are saying and maybe think about it. But I, would, I don't think I would be able to, to critically analyze my position in society. But I think it, it does speak to the point of can, white can white women effectively critique themselves and the systems that they're in wow 
You are good. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I would be I would be interested in hearing it. Definitely interested to hear and see it. What I don't want to hear or see though is self-victimization. That's old. That's done off already. Forever. And what I especially don't want to see or hear is another black woman saying that the people who are offended by this kind of thing are just jealous. That means the black girls can't wear a long blonde weave uh, wig down to our feet. We gonna do whatever the fuck we want, when we want, how we want. Yeah. So please stop, it's just, it screams just insecurity, it screams that you're jealous. Only jealous people do things like this. Now I understand that Nikki was implying that people were just jealous of Jesse's success, right? She wasn't, I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt because like I said, I'm gonna have to take my time with her. I don't think she was saying like, cause you're black, you're jealous of Jesse. But here's the thing, considering Jesse's solo success is fueled by her cosplaying racial ambiguity. Wow. Now that opens up a whole can of worms, doesn't it? Black women only being angry at stuff because they're jealous of white women has been the cop out of the last couple of decades. The cop out, the kiss of reduction, the kiss of invalidation. And I would like to talk about it. I think the first time I saw this blatantly posited in pop culture was, do y'all remember the show Hater? It was a show that aired in 2011, but it stopped right there because it sucked. But anyway, it was hosted by Mario Lopez and basically celebrities would confront their haters with hopes that by the end of spending the day with them, the haters would learn that their hate was misdirected. Now what's interesting is Snooki had an episode where her hater was an Italian man. Snooki is culturally Italian. Eva Longoria had an episode where her hater identified as a Latino man. Eva Longoria identified as Latina. But Kim K had a hater who was a black woman who shared absolutely nothing in common with her aside from her shape. And surprise, surprise, what was it that the hater hated? Kardashian, I hate her ass. That ass is not real. This is real. I don't like what you stand for. I don't like how you out here tanning, how you got the lip injections. It's f***ing up the game for me, okay? I used to have a corner on this market. Damn. Oh. Come on. Frankly, the bitch is a thief. She got the fake booty. She's all over the media with our men. Everything about you is fake. This is the exact way people stage and paint black women as just inherently jealous of white women for things that they simply cannot control. Rather than bringing truth to the matter, nuance to the matter, and saying that we may just be resentful of the structures, the biases and the politics that allow white women's beauty to be appreciated without any obstacles. Have you ever felt like a black woman was jealous of you or black women in general were jealous of white women? Yeah, so I feel like that's kind of a hard question to answer mm -hmm. because in the first place, we use jealousy as an accusation um, when it's just a human feeling. Okay. And we use it as a silencing tactic. Right. Um, and like all silencing tactics, whether or not it's true is super beside the point. It's a nonsensical accusation to point at someone and say, you're just jealous. Right. Because, um, and I know that's not what your question was, but immediately when you hear- No, it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, you're onto something good. We don't see, especially towards black women, we never see the word jealousy used in a neutral or just like descriptive way, right? Like it's always like an accusation, like you're doing something bad by being quote unquote jealous. And it's like, well, I don't know how black women feel, but so what if jealousy is one of the things that some of them feel? Like that would be valid. It's normal to feel jealous when someone else is treated better than you. Another part of it is that like a lot of the feelings that you feel, that you see marginalized people express are filtered through anger because anger is one of the least vulnerable emotions you can show. Mm. Um, and jealousy is an, a very vulnerable emotion. You know, it's very scary to tell someone you're jealous. So I think 
part of us pointing the finger at Black women and saying, you're just jealous, is taking power away from them and forcing vulnerability onto them. Yeah, I love what you said about um, the vulnerability portion because I actually have thought about that as well. Um, you said that it kind of forces us into a vulnerability um, and I feel it takes, it already takes vulnerability to admit that this um, brings up negative emotion to begin with right and yeah. so to use that silencing tactic to dismiss us or reduce us it's like where where else can we go from here do you know what i feel like yeah it is rude and jealousy but what's wrong with it being rude and jealousy like i have we have every right to be jealous um mm -hmm. especially like i mean if someone takes credit for something that you started why would it why would you not be jealous it's, it's a normal human reaction people then um dismiss someone such as myself when I point out it's like yes I am well am I jealous in that regard I mean this does nothing for me it's just that I love my culture and I want the women who created the culture to get the respect that they deserve but like yeah it's just, it's just so much more complex than that I want to go back to what you said about like personally you are not jealous of white women mm -hmm. but have you ever found yourself in a situation where you were and can you expand on it Oh, I I have my goodies and bad days to be honest. Um, at one point when I was younger, I was definitely jealous of white women. But um, I think because I'm the kind of person, it sounds so bad. I'm the kind of person I walk into a room and like, um, and I actually watch it. I watch it video. I really resonate. It really resonated with me. Um, and you were talking about the ordinary black girl, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's me. I, was like, that's me. <laughs> I, like, I still have this thing when I when I walk into a room, I don't expect. Because I was having this conversation again with my friend from Washington about how desirability politics, going beyond romantic relationships, being desirable is a like is a key thing to how people progress in society. So like I walk into a room and I'm like, I don't expect anyone to desire me in any regard. And if no one desires me, then they're not some some people really will treat you like shit if they don't desire you. And so I always prepare myself for that treatment, like to be treated less than. So before I used to be very jealous. Because then I would see how, especially guys, when I wanted when I wanted male attention, I could see how the guys would treat someone who they found attractive versus how they didn't. And yeah, like that, I used to be jealous because of that. Because I just knew that, you know, this girl is going to like, that light skin girl, that girl with the curly hair, that girl with the hourglass figure, that girl with the amazing face. Like, I, I just know that there's going to be a certain level of like, desire that she's going to have that I'm not going to have and I used to be jealous of that yeah it's every time I ask this question it's always a very specific um very anecdotal response mm -hmm. it's never generalized and it's interesting because it's like you know if you do actually take the time to listen to um black women's stories about interracial jealousy they'll be honest with you they'll tell yeah. you you know personal stories like that um, but it's not what you think it is. More nuance needs to be added to the conversation to actually mm -hmm. understand it for what it is. Yeah. I definitely think the jealousy just comes from like normal human emotion. I think it wouldn't be fair to say that jealousy doesn't play a part because I feel like people see jealousy as something that's so negative rather than it being just neutral and being able to say it and admit it. Um, and I think too, and then when people are jealous, I feel like people could blame it on like capitalism in the media. Like I'm being forced to be jealous of people who I shouldn't be. And I feel like people should blame it on that more. Like we wouldn't be jealous of each other if so, so many things weren't commodified and people were able to capitalize off it. If we took off the, I don't wanna say commodification. <laughs> if, if we took off like things, certain things being a commodity and people being able to make money off it, yes, I'm gonna be jealous over some girl, some white girl who's able to tan her skin, put on some faux locks, look just like me and make more money than me. Of course I'm going to be mad at that because I would want that financial security by being myself. So that's where I feel like, of course, the jealousy comes from for some people. Like, this, that's not fair that this person can live a sustainable and comfortable life off an aesthetic that is natural to me. So I think that's, I think that's normal and I think it's righteous sometimes. Have you ever been jealous of someone of the opposite race for any reason? Yeah, when I was thinking of this question, I, not now, like in my grown age, but um, um, when I was little, I was thinking about it and I definitely felt jealous of white, like white women specifically, 
but it wasn't that I was jealous of their whiteness. I was jealous of the ease that came with that whiteness, the ease of going into a target and seeing a billion of your shades already there. And when you ask, and you know, I would ask somebody, oh, like, do you have more of these chocolate shades? And it's like, oh, it's online. Mm. And I'm like, what about my, what if my screen brightness is wrong? Like, what if I, yeah. you know, like, what if something happens and I just wish I could see it in person or like having such diverse representation in media, I'm like, look at all, like, I'm, I'm, you know, I think we're, we're progressing there, but seeing all kinds of black people, all kinds of black women and femme and seeing, seeing how like romantic options for people, even within your own race, you know, people with lighter skin had when I was younger, it was like, I want that ease. I don't want to be white, but I just want the ease that comes along with it. Yeah, exactly. And this is why I'm so glad I'm having this conversation because like you began in my grown age, no, I'm not, I'm not jealous of women um, because, you know, I feel like although we're young, we've experienced the world enough to see that there's no equity in that comparison. Like they're unfit to be compared, you know, because of the structural differences and because, you know, of, of the ease that they are awarded to be white versus versus right so the reason people are reacting like this to what nikki said is because she has now she's done so much more damage than just hurt our feelings she has opened up the floodgates and um provided some allowance for people to follow their comfortable routine of invalidating our very real concerns because this is how it works right Look at all of the Black feminist commentary that exists, or really just all of the Black commentary out there in general. All of the Black people whose presence on the internet is all about discording the feelings, the culture, the anger, whatever have you, of Black people. Black people who release videos all the time, think pieces all the time, who are constantly compiling and sharing resources. But how far does that push the needle? Maybe this much every five years but let one black woman go against that let one candace owens say some shit let one Nicki minaj say some shit so yeah the unfair reward system can breed jealousy but i feel that's so minuscule in this entire web of things going on here ultimately if i had to give word to the generalized feeling here i would say it's exhaustion I am exhausted. Exhausted and quite frankly, a bit embarrassed at the lengths of which whiteness will go to to maintain its dominion. This is a greater issue than non-black women wanting to see what box braids feel like or wanting to see how things will change for them if their lips were fuller or their hips were wider. Like this is far beyond curiosity. It's about entitlement. The reason we're seeing all of this at the extreme level we do, and the reason why it's coddled like this, whiteness knows no other position than being at the forefront of what is considered beautiful. If you take a quick browse through the YouTube videos that are talking about uh, beauty standards through history, majority of what you'll see is how whiteness has remixed itself. First it was the Marilyn Monroe, then it was the Twiggy, then it was Kate Moss, then it was Britney Spears, and then it was Beyonce. And then I turned five. For majority of my life, and I'm assuming for majority of your life too, whoever you are watching this, um, most Western beauty standards have been spearheaded by whiteness. But now we have progressed to a time where inclusivity is in. Diversity is in. The elitism of white standards is no longer what's leading pop culture. However, even though we're in a place where it's the creations of people of color that are renovating pop culture, I mean, it's always been that way, but it's publicized for the first time now, right? White people still lead beauty standards because whiteness still has the structural power and resources to maintain being the face of it. So even though it's our shit, right? That's why Kim K is being credited for creating Bo Derek braids. Is that what the fuck they called it? People was acting like Miley was the first person ever to twerk. Like Ariana was the first person ever to wear a yaki ponytail. Like it's our shit, their reward. 
It's a power imbalance. And that's what's being exploited in all of this, right? The black fishing itself, um, cultural appropriation, and people automatically positioning black women as jealous of white women no matter what, um, people's inability to add nuance to the conversation. It's all about exploiting the power imbalance, me thinks. Right, so that is the reason why videos like this are so important for me to execute because there's simply not enough nuance. This is a topic that because of the celebrities who bring it forward, because of the platforms where majority of the discourse is had, the actual issue at hand can get lost in all the noise. You know, I was saying to someone the other day that, you know, I was a little hesitant to make this video because honestly, my thoughts on this could be summarized in like five to seven sentences max but i had to go ahead and draw it out and include the opinions of different people because i mean without that how else are we supposed to push this conversation forward because we keep running into the same shit every couple of months but all we do is run in a circle the only difference this time is we threw a little bit of Nicki minaj in there like i said in the beginning this black fishing stuff really isn't going anywhere and that's not me excusing it. That's just me saying, this is one of those things that we just gotta, we gotta let it shake itself out, right? I have no doubt in my mind that in 20 to 30 years, this is no longer gonna be as popular as it is now. No doubt in my mind that we're gonna look back on it and say, what the fuck was that? But until then, as we're still living in it, let's talk about it. Why not, right? Is this the natural progression of beauty standards or is this something else? Is this just jealousy or is this something else? We don't have to wait a couple decades to be examined by the future generation. Like we can go ahead and talk amongst ourselves right now. That is totally allowed. Thank you all so much for watching this video, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I also wanna give a special thank you to the participants of this video, Mariama, Tiana, Jamar, and Michelle. Like I was telling them, I have like this many feelings on the topic, but only like this many words. So it was nice that they could come along and you know contribute to it. They really helped bring this video together. And I really couldn't have done it without them. I mean, dead ass serious because like this video and uh, the video before this one and the video before that one, this just been taking me so long to finish. I don't know what's been going on with me. But then I started watching um, Sex Education season three, which if you want me to, I will. If you want me to, I might. <laughs> but yeah, I started watching it was hooked 30 minutes into the first episode, you know how that show go. But of course I had to add like some discipline to it cause I had some deadlines to me. So I was like, look, I bet not hit a TV on until you finish your homework. You know what I'm saying? Child, I finished this video so motherfucking fast. I finished this video so quick. Like suddenly the ideas just came pouring down. Like I knew exactly how to structure it, knew exactly where I wanted to take the conversation. It was easy because I had to know what was gonna happen next. And did, and did find out if you want me to, I might. But anyway, be sure to leave your thoughts and your comments down below. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, however you're feeling today, and subscribe for more content. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.